Okay, now if we are given a summation, one way we can figure it out is by writing it all out, adding it all up. But there are some tricks for it. For example, if I gave you the sum i equals 1 up to 30 of 8, what is that? When i is 1, we have 8. When i is 2, we have 8. We have 8. We have 8. We have 38, right? This is the i equals 1 and i equals 2 all the way up to i equals 30. And clearly that is 8 times 30, which is 240. We don't have to write it all out. This is what happens when there's no i's, when you don't use the index in the summation. In general, if we have i equals 1 up to n of some constant k, something that doesn't use i, it's going to be just k times n. Okay, so that is a nice easy trick. Uh, let's try a more challenging one. Let's say we want something simply like the sum i equals 1 up to 100 of just i. That is when i is 1, we add 1, plus 2, when i is 3, it's 3, plus 4, plus 5, plus all the way up to 100. And there's a famous story, Gauss, the prince of mathematicians, was in like elementary school and his school teacher said, probably wanted a cigarette break or something, said, okay, cat class, I want you to all add the numbers from 1 up to 100. Figuring that this was going to be some, you know, math, very basic math exercise, mostly busy work. But Gauss got the answer in a really, really short period of time. And nobody believed it, but slowly, slowly, the other kids in the class all came up with the same answer. What did he do? He realized that the, the second to last number was 99, the number before that was 98, the number before that was 97, and so on. And if... Well, what he did was he said, well, if I added another one of them, if I added another one of these summations backwards, it would be 100 plus 99 plus 98 plus, ta -ta 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 -ta, plus what is it, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 at the very, very end. And what would this be? This would be 101 plus 101 plus 101 plus... 101. It would be 100 101s. So this would be 100 times 101. Now, that is two of them added together. So one of them, sum i equals 1 up to 100, is going to be 100 times 101 divided by 2. And in general, the second formula that we have is i equals 1 up to n of just i is n times n plus 1 over 2 for exactly the same reasons. Now, I'm not going to get into why this is a wonderful exercise when you get to set theory and math logic and you learn about how to prove things by induction, that sort of I always, my favorite analogy is like dominoes. You, you prove that it works for when n is 1, and you prove that if it works for some number, it works for the next number. But anyway, if you sum i equals 1 up to n, and they're i squared, you're taking 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus all the way up to n squared, that is going to be n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all divided by 6. And if you sum up i equals 1 up to n i cubes, that is 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus 3 cubed and so on, up to n cubed, you get, oh, what is it, n squared times n plus 1 squared all over 4. And, well, there's some other tricks. There's some other tricks. If you are adding up a whole lot of things, i equals 1 up to n of, oh, what should I say? Let's say it's a constant, k, times some function of i. I don't care. If the first term is 5 times, if you multiply the first thing times 5, and the second thing has a 5, and the third thing has 5, you can take that 5 out. You know, it, it's, you know, what is this? This is k times f of 1 plus k times f of 2 plus all the way up to k times f of n. 
and you can just pull all the k's out. That's k times f of 1 plus f of 2 plus f of n, which is to say you can take the k out in front of the summation. k times the summation i equals 1 up to n of f of i. That is a useful thing. And if you have two things added together, if you are summing up i equals 1 up to n, and you have f of i plus g of i, that looks like a q, g of i, well, you know, what is it? You add f of 1 plus g of 1 plus f of 2 plus g of 2, you can split it up. You can say that this is i equals 1 up to n of f of i plus the sum i equals... Why is I'm writing ones? Yeah, difficult. One up to n of g of i. So in other words, you can either add f of one plus g of one plus f of two plus g of two plus f of three plus g of three, or you could add up all the f's and all of the g's. So that enables us. This will enable us to get any polynomial of order up to uh, up to powers of 3. For example, if we wanted to do the summation of i equals 1 up to 305 of, well, let's say 3i squared plus 2i huh, plus 1. We added up all the 1 up to 5. Well, let's do 5. Let's use the formula. Let's see if that 300 was right. So, because of this rule, we can add them separately. This is the same thing as the sum i equals 1 up to 5 of 3i squared plus the sum i equals 1 up to 5 of 2i plus the sum i equals 1 up to 5 of just 1. Because we can pull constants out front, this is 3 times the summation i equals 1 up to 5 of i squared plus 2 times the summation of i equals 1 up to 5i plus, well this one we know, this is a constant. We add 1 plus 1 plus 1 5 times. It's 5 times 1. It's 5. And what is this? This is 3. The summation for i squared was, what was it? I, uh, n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. So this is 5 times 5 plus 1 times 2 times 5 plus 1 all over 6. And then this one is 2 times what? This, is going, this was the n times n plus 1 over 2, if it's just the i. So it's 5 times 5 plus 1 all over 2 plus 5. Let me scroll down a little bit. What is this? This is 3. 5 times 6. Well, wait a second. Let's start simplifying. 6 divided by 6 is gone. 2 divided by 2 is gone. Yay! Fractions are deceased. This is what? 5 times 11 is 55. And this is 5 times 6 is 30 plus 5. And 3 times 55. I'm not feeling that 300. The i squareds, i times i plus 1 over 6. Well, 3 times 55 is 150 and 15 is 165. Plus 35 is 200. Hmm. Wait a second. What did I do wrong? When you plug in 1, we got 3. Summation i equals 1 up to 5. 